Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show y'all the variations that can be made within the European 4-in-1 weave just by modifying the ring size. So um, I'm making this video for my patrons. Uh, thanks guys. Hey, thanks for your support. Um, <laughs> but, but also uh, in your craft along kits this month, um, you'll have gotten either one or multiples of these different ring sizes. So this one is 16 gauge, 3 sixteenths. This one is 18 gauge, 3 sixteenths. Uh, and that is standard wire gauge as well as the uh, 3 sixteenths, that's the inside diameter. So the distance from like the inside of one to the other side, not the outer diameter, if that makes sense. And then also 18 gauge or 16 gauge, 1 fourth inch. Sorry. Uh, and these ring sizes are very versatile. You could use them in a lot of different weaves, but, uh, but I wanted to focus specifically on the European 4-in-1. So here you can see, let's see if I can't zoom in just a bit, the differences there. So these two are the same wire size, um, but different internal diameters. So you can see this one really made a much tighter, you know, more more dense weave, whereas this one here has a lot more movement and stretch. Whenever I'm making like costume pieces or big like uh, you know like a chainmail shirt, I would go with something more of this kind of spacing because it allows a little bit more movement as opposed to something like this. It's more like if this were stretchy jeans, this is just regular blue jeans. Um, and what's more is if you used rubber rings uh, intermixed with it, it would be like leggings, <laughs> like super stretchy, very nice. Um, and then this one here, these are the same inner diameter, but different ring sizes. So you can get that same open airy look by using a thinner wire. So I don't know, just to kind of demonstrate that. And so now also I wanted to show you guys how to weave this pattern. So we sent you rings that we coiled and cut out of bright aluminum, which is a very, it's a pretty clean alloy, but it can still leave a gray residue. But if you just wear it, uh, wear the chainmail piece, like when you're washing your hands or when you're in the shower, like it, it shines right up with just regular soap and water. And I'm going to start by opening some rings. And to do that, I'm just, you know, see, wrenching open. You don't really want to open the ring this way. Because even though it is open, we're going to have a harder time trying to get that ring to be a nice circle again. See how that one looks a little... Whereas if whenever we close the ring, <clears throat> you know, we open it this way and then come in to close it. You can bring those two ends together and get them just as nice and flush lined up with each other as possible. And you can see it kept its round shape much more nicely. And also the structural integrity of the ring uh, is more intact. So the way I like to prep up before weaving is I'll have one open ring with two closed on each. And so it takes a little bit and I'm doing this real time with you guys that way we can craft together and <laughs> I actually uh, made these sample pieces in a live stream earlier today and it did come to me uh, y'all brought it to my attention that I actually I, they're like why do why do you set down the ring before uh, before you know instead of putting it on and it's I guess it's uncomfortable for me to twist my hand in a way to set the ring down like it puts an uncomfortable bend in my wrist so it's easier for me to just set it down and then pick it up <laughs> and put it on but this is just the way that I weave the more you do this uh, the more practice you get the more you're going to discover what works well for you what you like and what you don't like and you know you'll find your own way it's it, it's really is all about the end result if your closures are good if it's the weave that you wanted then you did it right 
Okay, so just two more closed rings. Now I do have other tutorials that might be a little bit more in depth on this uh, weave um, that I will have links to down in the video description or you can just search online. There's a lot of really good chainmail tutorials out there. But let's zoom back in. There we go. Now to start the weave, I'm going to take this and close it like that. And then I'm going to just spread those rings like butterflied, one over to each side, so that it's sitting like this. And then I'm gonna pick up another one. You can, if it's if you're having trouble, go ahead and just dump those two closed rings. You don't have to worry about them right now. But I wanna insert this ring in the same direction as the one that's currently in the center. So I'm gonna hook through right there, and then right there. And then I'm just going to pinch that, and now we can add the two closed rings, or if you rather, you could have just closed that and then added on two individual rings, but... And right now it is just going to completely fall out of shape, but that's okay. That will happen. You can just fold it back up, or we can just leave it regular. But I do like to fold it back up a bit because now we can splay those two rings open and see how it's starting to look like something hopefully <laughs> so we're gonna pick that ring up hook through one and then through the next and you can see that one keeps jumping down but sorry you might be able to hear the neighbors kids playing. So now we can just hold on to that. A lot of folks I'll see will do like, um, they'll add like um, a paper clip or something onto this end. That's usually where I attach the clasp. But we're going to take this and spread those two rings like this. That way it just sits like so. And then we're going to hook on another one. And you truly, you could just kind of do this until you get the length that you want. Now I am going to show you a lot of the times what will happen um, is sometimes it'll just look like that whenever you add your new ring on. And so in, in my classes that I teach at conventions, sometimes people, you know, they'll lay the rings like this and be like, okay, I'll go through there and then, nope. So if that happens, just undo the ring and then sp splay those like opening the pages of a book. And then hook from below and then from above. Or if the terminology makes more sense to you, you can hook through from the back side on the front side just whichever you know uh this away from me you know from between my pliers and the wall across from me is the back between the pliers and my body is the front and then we'll close that i like to hear that clicking it lets me know that we're making a nice solid closure and then i'm going to add one more and close it and I'm going to show you how to join this piece to the piece that I had woven earlier. So the reason that this is called the European 4-in-1 is in the completed weave, inside each one ring, there are four others. So you can see inside this one here, we have one, two, three, and four. And so if I had continued, you know, stop make weaving the other direction, you know, expanding this into a sheet, rather, <clears throat> you want the grains lining up the same way. <laughs> then this is tricky, too, so if you catch yourself being like, what in the crap is happening? Uh, you are not alone. There we go. So you can see now, if I had extended this way, 
I'd be hooking one ring through these four and it would have continued the pattern wide. So now that we have the weave pattern lined up, it looks like I need to just take an open one, an open ring, Oop, open that up, and I'm going to hook through one and two, and then I'm going to pick this piece up, and following that same pattern, hooking through three and four. Now let's close it and see if we did it right. Huzzah! <laughs> we did! Excellent. If it didn't work, sometimes just taking the ring out and trying again. Um, many times, whenever I was first getting into weaving chainmail, um, I, like, if I had to, ended up had to split a piece, because, like, I found out that I messed up in the middle, I would often end up just weaving two bracelets because I couldn't figure out how to get them back together. But with practice will come progress and if I can do it, surely you can also because this stuff did not come easily to me. But uh, you know, it's fun and if you like it, just keep at it. But yeah, so that is just a quick little video on European 4-in-1. And uh, I'd love to see pictures of what you all make. You can post them to our Discord. Um, there should be links to all the all the stuff that I'm mentioning down below. Um, we have Discord. You can do hash. Oh, that just made a mess. Um, <laughs> hashtag craft along with Yvonne over on Instagram, or you can post them to the Patreon page. Just however you like to be able to share with folks, because I do love getting to see what you all make. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, or requests for uh, next month's tutorials, please leave those down in the video, or like uh, below the video description, um, where again, there'll be links for everything. And I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and uh, until next time, y'all, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>